Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that they are selling in their upcoming December of 2016 Premier Auction. And today we're taking a look at a model of 1900 Roth Theodorovic Kernka pistol. Um, there's a very hazy history to these. There's very little good documentation, but in general, what we know is, first off, Georg Roth. His name is associated with this. He was an Austrian financier and industrialist. He didn't do any real design work himself, but he did do a lot of, call it venture capital, especially in firearms. He would buy and license patents and produce guns under, sort of under his name. He would do the financing, he'd get someone else to do the engineering, and developed a whole lot of very interesting, very cool firearms in this way. So that's how Roth's name is on it. Uh, Theodorovic is an Austrian engineer who first patented this long recoil uh, operating mechanism, which this pistol would use, as did a whole bunch of others, in a developmental series of it, and it would go on to be used in a Frommer, the whole Frommer series of pistols. And then the third name associated with this is Karl Kernke, who was another Austrian engineer, uh, formerly in the Austrian military, who came in late in, as this was transitioning away from Theodorovic. So uh, Theodorovic's work probably, there, again, there's very little about him, probably ended in the late 1890s. Kernke had been slowly working as a contract engineer for Georg Roth and then eventually was uh, brought on full time and did a lot of the development, which ended up producing the model of 1907 Roth Steyr pistol, which ought to have Kernka's name in it, but by general convention, doesn't. At any rate, these pistols were tested by the Austrian military on a couple of different occasions, 1900 and in 1897. Um, they were competing against primarily the Monlicher automatic pistol series. And in total, there were about 80 of these guns made. And these, these 80 guns run a complete developmental series through a couple of different cartridges, different firing mechanisms, a lot of different developmental stuff. This particular gun is serial number 77. These are all numbered in a single range. And it's from the very end. It's one of the, the most highly developed of this series. Now, I want to take a closer look at this in particular because of the firing mechanism. There is a ton of stuff going on here, which is it's complicated, and then it's complicated even more by the addition of this grip safety, which I believe is an actual aftermarket addition uh, designed by yet a different person. So let's dig into this. All right, so despite the fact that this grip looks goofy, this really is the least goofy version of the Theodorovic pistol that they ever made. Now, this is our grip safety here, and I'll preface this by saying I think this is actually an aftermarket grip safety uh, patented by a guy named Josef Tambor uh, and a couple other people, but primarily Tambor. I think this grip safety was actually added around the same time the pistol was made, but not by the factory. Uh, there are some Monlicher pistols from the same period that are documented with this safety. I believe the US military actually tested one. This is a way to add a grip safety to a gun that didn't otherwise have it for people who really wanted that. I will point out here, um, this grip safety is inletted into the grip and not into the frame. And you can see on the frame that the checkering has a border here. That border was simply cut off when this grip safety was added. And I suspect, had this grip safety been done by the factory, they would have made a set of grips to match it. And in this case, these don't. Anyway, moving along, this is a long recoil pistol. So we'll demo that real quick. Put the hammer back here. And in order to unlock it, you actually rotate this cocking piece slightly clockwise. That's going to rotate the bolt, which unlocks the bolt. Uh, in this way, actually, this is kind of like a Johnson semi-auto rifle. At any rate, um, if you, you can rotate it like this and then pull the bolt open and that opens up the action without moving the barrel. So this is just administrative. We can then look in here. Uh, this is fed by stripper clip and it has a 10 round internal magazine. And this little plate right there is the one uh, feed lip that prevents cartridges from coming out. So you have this on a spring here. So if you want to empty the magazine, you can open the bolt like this, lock it open, and then hit this and dump the ammunition out of the gun. 
while we're here, I will point out this has a GR, Georg Roth, uh, marking, patent, and serial number 77. Those are the only markings on this pistol. Now, this control right here is our bolt release. So that allows me to close the bolt. Now, if I pull back on this cocking piece without rotating it, then I will pull the whole barrel along with the bolt. So we'll go ahead and cock the hammer to get it out of the way, and we can do that. You can see the barrel is coming back here. When the barrel comes all the way back, it snaps forward. That would allow an empty case under there to eject, and now you're ready to fire another round. This would close if it weren't locked open by the empty magazine. All right, so that's the basic mechanical functioning. Now, the fire control group is what's really funky on this gun. Starting here, this is the fired position. The hammer's all the way down. Then we have this sort of position here, which simply brings the hammer out of alignment with the cocking piece and allows you to rotate it easily. Do that. If the hammer's all the way down, you can't rotate it. That also acts as a safety mechanism. It means the bolt cannot unlock um, and prevents you from firing when the bolt's not locked. So in order to open the gun, we have this half cock, I suppose is the best uh, description for it. So now I can cycle that if I want to. Then we have a single action, or a, I'm sorry, a double action position here. So when the gun fires, this is as far back as the hammer gets cocked. Now, from this position, I have a double action trigger. As I pull, the hammer is going to come back a little farther and then drop. So this is a safety function. This means you're less likely to inadvertently fire the gun because you have a, a longer and heavier trigger pull than a single action. However, if you want to fire this single action, you can manually thumb the hammer back all the way. That takes up all the rest of the travel in the trigger. And now you have a much lighter trigger without any creep. Um, and by the way, the trigger is totally disconnected at this point until the gun cycles, which puts the hammer back in the double action position. Now, let's say you are in double action mode and you don't want to be. You have a decocker. This button on the back drops the hammer into the double action position again. So we have a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and on top of that, we also have this grip safety, which has to be depressed in order to fire the gun. You want to see the inside of all this weirdness? Yeah, I figured you probably would. What's cool about these Theodorovic pistols is that they have a removable side plate that gives you really easy access to everything. So there's a lug here at the front that I want to rotate down like that. That unlocks this side plate, which I can then just pull clear off the gun. At this point, I can also pull off the left side grip. And now we've got the internals of the pistol. So if I manually rotate the bolt to unlock it, this angled camming surface is going to pull this backwards. This is acting against a recoil spring in the bottom. This is, in fact, the bolt's recoil spring. You can see it right in there. that. So when the bolt cycles, that spring compresses, and this lug is at the front of the spring, and it pulls the bolt forward and then forces it to rotate and lock. Now, the recoil spring for the barrel is wrapped around the barrel inside this jacket. You can see this moving back here as well. I'm not going to take that off because that's gnarly to deal with. What we really want to take a look at here is the firing mechanism. So in order to see the firing mechanism, I have to take out the magazine. Uh, this is a 10-round internal magazine. And it's going to be a little finicky to get out. There we go. And then we have, oop, there we go. Our trigger spring actually pushes against the side of the magazine. So when I take the magazine out, I also have to, first off, not let the trigger spring and its little detent go flying across the room, but I also have to take them out. So we'll start with this in the fired position here. 
we have a hammer connected to this whole complicated piece. And that sort of half cock position is when the hammer is resting right here on the end of this V-spring. That allows me to push it back in, but it holds it in place well enough to rotate the bolt. Now, there's our grip safety. Here's our trigger right there. And then this is going to actually trip the sear, which is back here. So, uh, and remember, the trigger return spring is out of the gun at the moment, so you have to pretend that it's in there. Now, when we move the hammer to its double action position, you'll see it's going to interact with the trigger right there, and it's also interacting with the grip safety, sort of. So, right there, the hammer has now locked itself in this detent, that is our double action position. So that, when I push on the, the trigger, will now continue to pull the hammer back. Now in our single action position here, the hammer is all the way cocked back, and the trigger is just pushing on this little protrusion on the sear. As soon as it goes up just a little bit, it will fire. So should I release the grip safety? There we go. Now you can see how it prevents the hammer from releasing. The hammer can't move backward, so nothing can happen. The gun's locked. Take that out of engagement, and now we have a space right there that the hammer can travel into and fire. So one last element. We also still have our decocking button there. So if I have the grip safety engaged and I push the decocking lever, what it is going to do is lift this sear up, which is going to release the hammer. The hammer will drop down, but it gets caught by this spur of the trigger and now puts it back in double action mode. Complicated enough? It's pretty cool. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. There's a lot going on in this pistol, and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at it and learned something, some very very niche details about a very niche pistol that uh, didn't ultimately go anywhere. At any rate, if you would like to have this yourself, it is of course coming up for sale here at Rock Island. If you take a look in the description text below, you'll find a link to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy. You can take a look at their pictures and their description. And if you're interested, place a bid over the phone, over the internet, or come here and participate live in the auction. Thanks for watching.